Hi my DG friends and welcome back to yet another video. If you found your way here, I'm sure you have either played Digimon World or at least have heard of it before. As you probably know, this game was initially released for the PlayStation by Bandai in January 1999 in Japan. Then in May 2000 it hit shelves in the US. And then finally in July 2001 it was released in Europe as well. But did you also know that the Japanese and US versions were quite different from the European versions? And no, I'm not talking about the different languages here. The JP and NA versions used the so-called NTSC standard, while the EU version used the PAL standard. NTSC is an abbreviation for National Television Standards Committee. Named for the group that originally developed the black and white and subsequently colored television system that is used in the United States, Japan and many other countries. PAL is an abbreviation for Face Alternate Line. This is the video format standard used in many European countries. But what is the actual difference and what does it have to do with my Digimon World game? Regarding the direct difference between NTSC and PAL, NTSC transmits 30 frames per second with each frame having 522 scan lines whilst PAL transmits at 25 frames per second with each frame having 625 scan lines. The scan lines are to do with visual information, so more scan lines mean a better picture quality and resolution. And in Digimon World? Well, first of all, the PAL version runs at 20% slower speed than the NTSC version, but I think most of you were already familiar with that. On top of that? The PAL version doesn't have the Gyromon Jukebox glitch, where the game just freezes when you scroll through the list of available tunes. Yes, this sadly does happen in the NTSC version. But the PAL version does have one huge bug that the NTSC version does not have. This bug is quite infamous and I'm sure you have all heard of it before. The Ogremon's Fortress bug. The Ogremon's Fortress bug. In the NTSC version you can simply talk to the Agumon that stands before Ogremon's fortress and after you have beaten Ogremon for the first time, you can easily enter his fortress to progress the story as it was intended by the developers. Unfortunately, due to a slight error in the script that found its way to the PAL version, it is not possible to talk to that Agumon, no matter what you do. So ultimately, the entrance to Ogremon's fortress does not trigger and you can't get inside. When I was younger, of course I had no idea that this was due to a bug. And as I live in Germany, I obviously owned the German PAL version of the game. I simply thought I had to come back later, but when I had beaten the final boss and finally returned to this point and the Agumon still ignored the hell out of me, I was getting more and more confused. Why doesn't he react? Do I need a specific Digimon? Do I need to meet other conditions for it to trigger? Eventually, I was able to find some answers to it online. And trust me, that wasn't easy at the time because of how limited the internet was back then. I was lucky enough to find a forum online though that explained that this is a bug and not intended. However, there was also a suggestion for a possible workaround that involved some strange rituals that needed to be performed with your PlayStation console. Of course, at first I thought this was just a troll that came up with this nonsense, but the longer I thought about it, the more I wanted to give it a try. And so I did. The strategy was infamously called Der Kloppen Cheat, which could be translated as the lid cheat in the lid of the PlayStation console that covers the disc tray. For this trick to work, it is necessary to have either a PlayStation 1 or a PlayStation 2 Slim. It does not work with the regular PS2, as it does not have a lid, but what does the lid have to do with the bug workaround? Well, let's go over it step by step. Thankfully, my old PS2 Slim and my Digimon World PAL version still work perfectly fine to this day, so I was able to hook it up to my capture card and record some footage. I was even more lucky to find out that one of my save files already met the requirements for this workaround to actually work. First of all, you need to have beaten the final boss on Mount Infinity. Then, when you get back to Digimon World, you'll have to talk to Digimon. He will tell you that Analog Man has returned, or at least that he can sense his evil energy somewhere, but he doesn't know where he is. I'm sure most of you have played the postgame and already know what's going on. Analog Man and Machidramon will appear in one of the three possible places, Grey Lord's Mansion, Ice Sanctuary and of course, Ogremon's Fortress. 
So what actually happens when the back dimension appears in the fortress? We shouldn't be able to enter, no? Well, you can enter it. You just have to be lucky that it appears in the fortress. So once again, thank you 11 year old me for leaving a save file on my memory card that had these requirements met. It's as if my past self knew I was going to come back to talk about this workaround. Worst case, I would have had to wait for 22 in-game days for the back dimension to reappear and then it's not even guaranteed it will be in the right place. Lucky! Anyway, let's get back into it. So, I took my overpowered Phoenix Mount to Ogremon's fortress and tried to talk to the Agumon, but of course this doesn't work. However, it is actually possible to sneak past this Agumon and then see if the back dimension is indeed in the fortress. You need to approach him from a certain angle and then hold down the R or L button to walk slower while mashing the D-pad in front, right and left direction. Eventually, you can sneak past him and approach the entrance and voila! We are in the back dimension. Well, we're still not in a fortress, right? Well, first of all, enjoy all the bonus items this place has to offer, battle a few Digimon and make your way towards the final teleporter. Now it is important to save your game, so wait until your Digimon has to rest and then save. This is essential as it is unlikely that you will hit this first try. Then the fun begins. Once you enter the teleporter, you will spawn inside the Ogre Fortress one room before the Ogremon fight. And uh, usually you can't move or explore this place because you are thrown into the Machine Dramon fight right away and then teleported back to the city after. But what if there is a way to make it possible to move around once we are in the fortress? And this is where the so-called lid cheat comes in. Once you have entered the last teleporter, you will have to wait for the music to start playing and then open your PlayStation lid at the right moment. This requires perfect timing and needs to be practiced. It took me around 15 attempts, but hey, I haven't done this in 20 years, so uh, 15 ain't that bad, huh? Anyway, the PlayStation itself actually gives you an audio cue that helps you get the timing right. Once the area music starts playing, the PlayStation's disc tray will make a certain sound just a few seconds after the music started. This sound is different from the usual sounds it makes. It is very subtle and not easy to pick out, but you will know what I mean once you have tried it yourself. Open the lid at that specific moment and keep it open. If it worked, you will find an item box right next to your character. And you will also notice that you can move around. This means that it worked. You can't interact with Analog Man or Machine Draman, but that's also not what we want. You want to sneak past Machine Dramon and then go into Ogremon's room. That room won't load unless you close the lid again, which you should do now. Then his team will start to play, you can fight him now, just like in the NTSC version and trigger all the events that come after this fight. Shellmon, Waymon, Factorial Town, Greylord's Mansion Part 2 and Vaidmon. Quite a bit, huh? All of this was not possible to get without this workaround thanks to the goddamn Ogremon's Fortress bug. Oh, by the way, the footage I have here is after I had already beaten Ogremon, so there was no point for me to hang around here any longer. It's just to show you guys what to do and what exactly happens. By the way, if you go back to the room where you came from, Analog Man and Machine Ramon will still be there, waiting for a worthy challenger. Well, unfortunately, once you go back to that room, you are stuck inside Machine Dramon and can't get out unless you have an autopilot or you wait for your Digimon to die. So if you're doing this for the first time, don't go back. Fight Ogremon and follow him through his emergency elevator. From now on, you can enter the fortress whenever you want, just not from the front. It will have to be the back door. And this is how you can work yourself around the PAL bug and actually finally 100% this game. Sorry if this video comes 20 years too late, but hey, that's not all! Apart from this awesome workaround, you can do something else with this lid cheat and it is actually quite interesting. I'm sure not many of you have heard of this or seen it before, so let me show you what I mean. You can see it as uh, bonus content. For this to benefit you to the max, you need to start a new save file. 
get your Digimon, beat Agumon outside the city, and go further down to the screen where you have the first wild toilet and two Modoki Betamon running around. Important note, it has to be daytime for them to be there. This will be your target area. So, go to the screen before that. I always made it work with the screen above and uh, perform the lid cheat again going into the target screen. I find the audio cue easier to perceive here as there is no actual music playing, just some birds chirping. Leave the lid open at all times. You can check if you have done it right by trying to go back up again. If you can't leave the area from the top screen, then you know it worked. Go to the bottom Modoki Betamon and talk to it. It will indeed not want to fight you, but say the following. Ich bin Bodo Bastler. Wie kann ich dir helfen? Which means something like, I am Bodo Bastler. How can I help you? Bastler literally translated means something like DIYer or tinkerer. Uh, anyway, this guy is called Bodo apparently. He will offer you three different services, which will be change stats, fast forward, and learn all techniques. This sounds too good to be true, right? Well, actually, the one with learn all techs only works in the beginning of the game and for some reason won't work later on. But the other two things you can do at any time. So let's see if this guy can actually work wonders and keep his promise. If you pick the one that says change stats, you can choose from raising, lowering or resetting stats. Then you can raise or lower them by either 50, 100 or 200. And you can do that multiple times until you reach maximum stats. And the same goes for lowering them. You can have them lowered to all zero, even HP and MP, which I found very funny. If you reset them, they will go back to 550s, so not that great. Once you max the stats and close the menu, you'll receive a medal. But be careful, you might be stuck and Bodo will keep talking to you. Well, for now, we are not done, so let's see what else he can do. Next, we want to learn all techniques, so we will go into that. And yes, this can also be reverted. If you mash the menu button while closing the dialogue, you can make it to the player's menu and see for yourself. All techniques are learned. If you want to get out of there, you can just praise or scold your Digimon and wait for Bodo to move away from you, so you can move freely again. But let's see if we can actually fast forward the in-game time as well. Talk to him again and tell him to fast forward the time. Then choose if you want one hour, six hours or one day to pass. You can even let multiple days pass by repeatedly talking to him. I don't know why anyone would want to do this other than to reach the 10 years medal, but um, oh, I see, to get Numemon. <laughs> uh, anyway, check out our overpowered Numemon, which will die in just a few seconds because I made him too old. But uh, seriously, I got quite spooked when I was younger and saw this for the first time because why does he have a functional dialogue? And why does he have a name? Who came up with this and who programmed this? I have no answer to this even to this day, so maybe one of you guys has. Maybe some developer planted this easter egg on purpose to reward players who come up with this super weird cheat that I don't know how you would even come up with on your own. But hey, that's just a theory, a game, um, <clears throat> wait, I don't want to get in trouble. But yeah guys, that was my little showcase of the Digimon World PAL version lit cheat. Please let me know in the comments what you think, if you knew about this or if this was the first time you have heard of this or even seen it. I can't wait for your replies. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and maybe even share this with your Digi friends. And finally, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. See you next time, keep digivolving my friends!